So we're here at Arm TechCon. So, uh, so who are you? So I'm Paul Kolstock. I run uh, strategic and segment marketing for Global Foundries. I'm uh, Subi King Yuri. I'm the Vice President of Advanced Technology Architecture in the Office of the CTO. I'm Srinivas Nuri. I'm the Director for SOC Innovation Arm Ecosystem. So you had a fireside chat here at Arm TechCon. And uh, so what were you talking about? So I hope you attended that, and uh, it was a pretty good discussion for about an hour. What we wanted to do was kind of give a view on where the challenges are on going, you know, from planar to FinFET. I think we covered a wide range of uh, topics, right, from technology to SSC applications to some of the IP ecosystem, and uh, we had a pretty good moderator from Gartner, and we also had uh, participation from our IP side, with uh, John Handling was there. So the whole idea was to give a complete view on um, on the on first generation FinFET. So, uh, so FinFET, can you explain a little bit how does it work? Okay, so let me take this, guys. So the whole idea, if you if you really look at what has been happening, right, the planar device, which has been the conventional device for the last few generations, has not really scaled at all, right? You know, if you look at the voltage scaling in particular, that has been a big challenge. There are many reasons why that happens, but fundamentally, the device just does not scale from a voltage point of view, and, and primarily the SRAMs. Planar, does that mean 2D? Or? Yes, 2D devices, right? For, for, for a long time now, people have tried to scale it in many different ways. There have been design solutions to, to get that to the next level, but you know, it's running out of steam. And um, the FinFed, which basically has gate on three sides, has allows you to control the channel in a much better way and therefore you know your eye on and eye off can be can be much better and that's really the, the way to go to the next level. So with that we are able to you know bring the voltage down 100 to 150 millivolts in terms of operating voltage and, and it also allows you a wide range of operating voltage, you know roughly 300 to 400 millivolts and, and that's the next level of, of, of scaling which is why we call it the fin flexion point. So you were talking about there was there's a company who came out with that first, what, uh, and you said that everybody know who it okay. is. So what, so, what so do you we, need, we need to clarify. Yeah. Fin, FinFed device has been in the research and has been in the labs and in the academics for 10 to 12 years, right? I mean, the Professor Chiming Ho from Berkeley University is really called the father of uh, FinFed. He's the one he and his students really invented uh, FinFed long time back. But, but the point is to take that to high volume production is not an easy task, right? I mean, we call it the lab for the fab gap, right? And uh, so what we have done is, as a part of our uh, IBM, Samsung, Global Foundries Joint Development Alliance, we put the, the best brains in the world to take that from the lab to the fab. And uh, by the way, the more important point is Everybody wants to scale planar as far and as much as possible, which is what we all did. But now that it's running out of steam, there is no other choice but to get to FinFed. No, we are not the first to invent FinFed, but we are first foundry to launch FinFed device. So there's no like a company that can block others from using the concept? That's not possible, <laughs> right? Well, it's, it's pretty generic. Everybody knows how to do FinFed, but you know, yeah, there are the people may have some uh, proprietary uh, patents and copyrights and, and whatever else, but it's not going to block anybody from uh, from doing it. So, what kind of things are you doing here at the Arm TechCon? Well, for example, one key message we wanted to bring today was talking about um, how FinFets uh, can be brought to market in a very low risk way. So, everyone that's familiar with the process technology knows that high key metal gate, for example, was a big change for the industry. Right, and uh, as, a, as a big change, there's always risk associated with that. It takes time and learning, and in retrospect, we did a lot of learning, not just us, the whole industry. So how do we do that again? Right, so we're going from 28 and 32, which is high-key metal gate, to this 14 nanometer FinFET technology. How do we bring all that learning to the forefront and de-risk the process for customers bringing this to market? How do we take all that learning we did on high-key metal gate, how do we wrap that around our 20 nanometer process and our 14 nanometer process to get the best solution in the shortest time possible with the least amount of risk for our customers? So, uh, what kind of other things do you, did you talk about uh, at the, at the right. fireside chat? So, as, as I think you guys know, everybody knows, right? Arm today is the center of the world, really. 
because you know, if you really look at it, right, whether it is a smartphone, you know, tablets, whether it is even they're getting into the server space as well, because of the low power, ARM is the king in terms of the computing, and that's where we come in as well. Because ARM has the IP from a processor point of view, but they need foundries like us to bring the process technology to make that a reality. So we, bringing in the FinTech technology, can lower the power and increase the value proposition of ARM processors. And that is a doubling effort. Right? Basically, the effect is like you will have not just the low power architecture, but you also have the low power process. These two together will basically uh, multiply the benefits for the mobile community. And, and that's why you know the, the panel session that we have, we call it as the Extreme Mobility. 14XM stands for Extreme Mobility. And FinFed brings the FinFlexion point in there. And we all came to give different viewpoints. You know, Subi from the architecture, technology architecture point of view. I look at the SOC, the complete SOC solution, how to take advantage of the architecture and uh, strategic marketing call. You know, I think we all wanted to bring that to the customers who are eventually going to be benefiting from this. So ARM is huge. Yes. And uh, it's awesome. Well, how, do you, how do you describe what's going on? Well, our ecosystem is, um, is at the core of mobile revolution, right? I mean, if you really look at what is happening, smart mobile computing is the fastest growing segment, and ARM is at the heart of all of those mobile devices today. And combine that, like Jim was saying, and also like Paul mentioned, combine that with the, with the FinFlexion, with the FinFlex device, it can take the whole mobile computing to a completely different world, to the next level, right? And the way to look at that is, you give the advanced smart mobile processors and the fin devices in the hands of really creative designers, they can do wonders. So we, so we really call this fantastic innovation. Let me stop there. <laughs> I will say one other thing about that. You know, FinFit's a, a big deal, right? And why is it a big deal and why is ARM you know, it's instrumental in that? You know, right now we're focusing on mobile architectures because mobile is everything, low power, high performance. Um, but ARM also released today a number of other cores, the A50 core series, which is going after servers or going after networking. And, and my job in segment marketing is we look at all these markets on a daily basis, right? I've got to put together the solutions for our customers that are technology-based, that are core-based, that are IP-based, that are EDA-based. But ARM's a central part of that. So this announcement by them today, this new announcement on the new cores, I think takes them in a whole other direction, right? It's beyond mobile, it's beyond industrial where they've been pretty strong, and now takes them into the server space, and also takes them into the networking space, which, where I think again, it's the, it's the x86 versus ARM kind of architectural battle. So really, there are, are there only two now, two architectures that are important yep. in the world? Yep. It's ARM architecture and it's x86. This morning, uh, AMD was on stage, and uh, if you look at, historically, Global Foundries is a, do you call it a spin-off, or how is it called? From yeah, yeah spin-off, yeah, so that's, that's a good point. So, what does that mean? Does that mean that uh, yeah. Global Foundries, being the ARM specialist, is like ready with AMD, or can, can I say anything about that? Sure, so let, me, let me take that, because uh, I, was, I was there in that presentation. So AMD, like Paul was saying, x86 and ARM are the two prevalent architectures. AMD has been x86 for many decades now, and the only viable alternative to Intel in the x86 market. But yesterday they made an important announcement where they said they're going to start using a completely different architecture, which is ARM-based, to do the servers, and maybe even tablets. And they actually adopted this uh, A57 that ARM announced. They're going to be using that in the server space. It is true that Global Foundry's origins come from AMD's foundry, but now we are an entirely independent foundry. But we do have a very good relationship with AMD. They, they manufacture their bleeding edge processes using our technology, right? So we could, we could certainly work with them on this because we have a lot of collaborative activities going on with ARM. So there is an opportunity there, there's no question. AMD has not revealed in terms of how they are approaching this. And so, you know, it's better to not comment about that. But certainly could be an opportunity. But I'd like to make a comment about this. I think it's really important in terms of our heritage. 
as we talked about the spin-off with us from AMD, but also about this collaborative device manufacturer, which was a theme of the panel session tonight. Unlike a lot of foundries, our DNA is between the tight collaboration, between the chip architecture and the process architecture. This is what was the Global Foundries or the advanced manufacturing technology and the AMD relationship before the spinoff. So we're really uniquely, I think, positioned to bring that kind of relationship to the foundry industry. It's not something you see today with a lot of foundry. They, they dictate what customers can get. They have arm's length you know, kind of relationships. We're taking a much different approach and that collaboration, which I think is in our DNA, from that AMD relationship we had before is very instrumental yeah. and, and a business proposition that's, for us. That's a very good point. I want to just add a few points there, you know. If you really look at uh, when, when our investors really considered, you know, spinning off the manufacturing unit from, uh, from uh, AMD long time back, there were a few strategic value props, right? One of them was what Paul and Rashin was were just talking about, which is, it was already an IDM, we knew exactly how to operate as an IDM and what are the key values of IDM and how to bring all those values of that IDM to the foundry world. Okay, that was a big value proposition that we are uniquely positioned, right? The second one was, we already thought about making this a global footprint, right? And global footprint really has a number of key value props, which is getting the, the best global talent to solve some of these technology challenges is absolutely necessary. We simply cannot localize. We have to go after the world's best global talent anyway. So that's the second value proposition. The third one is, if you look at the geographical risk that's associated you know, with, with the foundries that are there today, if you look at some of the, um, the biggest fabs that are uh, located today, they're all pretty much in the earthquake prone zone. Okay, you and I here will not be here if there is a 9.9 .9 or 9.5 earthquake there, right? So, and our customers have been telling us that that's a big issue, right? So what we have done is to distribute our uh, fab locations, you know, around the world. This in Germany? Germany, to US, to Singapore, for example, and we'll have more in different continents, right? That's really the whole idea of global foundries. That's why we call it global foundries. And last but not the least uh, of, the, of the many other uh, key value propositions is really the, the proximity to customers, right? Especially you heard all of the challenges on the technology today to really solve some of those problems. You've got to be really close to customers. And we are, we are all over the world, very close to key customers, whether it's Europe or whether it's North America or whether it's Asia, we are there. We work very, very closely with our key customers right from like she was in Paul was saying, from technology architecture all the way up. So, so when you talk about the future going from 20 to 14, is it like a, a speech like uh, we're going to put the man on the moon, it's like crazy far out in the future, or you really know it's going to work? Okay. Like, how does it, is it like a huge challenge? It is. Um, let me just start off and you guys can uh, join that. If you look at the, the technology challenges historically, Pike and Metal Gate, for example, was, was a big you know, um, revolution. To go from there, from planar to FinFed, for example, you've got to build on the Heike Metal Gate learning. So we all, we, all, we all have solved that problem. We were one of the first in the family in, in the world to really take care of the uh, Heike Metal Gate learning. We are the leaders in that space, right? Then came the FinFed. FinFed is really necessary for all the reasons I was just talking about earlier, but it's built on high K Metal Gate leadership, right? Now, you want to compare that with Man on the Moon? I don't know. It's, it's not that easy to, to compare, but it is. It is a major challenge going from Plano to FinFed. But the reasons I just gave you earlier, right, you know, putting the best global talent to take this research to, from, fa you know, from uh, lab to the fab, we are there. We have tens of years of uh, FinFET research getting ready to take it in high volume production. And if you were at the fireside chat, you heard you know, some of the things that we have done to mitigate risk on the process side and on the design side. We have done everything we can to accelerate you know, FinFET in production. And we truly believe we'll be the first company in the, in the industry to really ramp up FinFET in high volume production. Nice, all right. So uh, thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.